the time being the Pope must feel great. Your opinions are respected, you get to drive in that cool Pope car, and you get to wear a cape without anyone questioning your sanity. The only time when it might not seem so great is if you have a health problem, and suddenly millions of people are looking at detailed diagrams of your colon. Here are those detailed diagrams. Pope Francis has had successful surgery to treat a colon problem at a hospital in Rome, according to a press statement on the Vatican's website. In the statement released late Sunday, a Vatican spokesperson said 84-year-old Francis received general anesthesia during the surgery, which was designed to address diverticular stenosis of the sigmoid section of the colon. Diverticula are protrusions caused by pressure affecting weakened areas inside the colon's walls, according to the Cleveland Clinic. The rate at which diverticula occur increases with age, and it affects almost everyone over 80. These diverticula can become infected and inflamed in a condition called diverticulitis, which can cause other problems for the body. The BBC reports that in the Pope's case, the particular issue is a narrowing of sections of the colon. This narrowing is usually caused by previous infections in your colon causing scars to form, according to the Cleveland Clinic. The American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons explains that this narrowing means feces cannot easily pass through. According to the Cleveland Clinic, surgery to address this issue usually involves removing part of the colon. The disease section of the colon is removed and the colon is reattached to the rectum, though sometimes a colostomy bag is temporarily inserted while the colon fully heals. Addressing thousands of worshippers in St. Peter's Square on Sunday, the Pope made no mention of his upcoming surgery, according to NPR, instead revealing that he intended to go to Hungary and Slovakia in September. However, a week previously, during the same Sunday address, the Pope did ask the public for their prayers. I need to ask you to pray for the Pope, pray in a special way, he said on June 27th. The Pope needs your prayers. Elected to the role of Pope in 2013 following the resignation of his predecessor, Benedict XVI, Pope Francis is the first Latin American Pope. And now he's also the first Pope whose colon has captured our attention for more than 30 seconds. A man in Japan ended up in the hospital after swallowing a tiny fish bone. The 73-year-old was enjoying his meal until he ate a yellow-tail fish and felt pain in his lower abdomen. Citing a study in the New England Journal of Medicine, Live Science reports that the guy went to the emergency room where the doctors performed a physical exam and found tenderness across his lower abdomen. He let the doctors know that he had eaten a yellowtail. He also had a small fever. The doctors took a CT scan of the 73-year-old's abdomen. They noticed his small intestine had been punctured by a tiny fish bone. Poor guy. The man underwent surgery and the doctors successfully removed the part of his intestine that contained the 2 centimeter long fish bone. The doctors also prescribed the 73-year-old with antibiotics to avoid infections from having a punctured small intestine. According to the report, the man recovered after spending 8 days in the hospital. A separate study published in the World Journal of Gastroenterology found that less than 1% of ingested fish bones cause a tear to the intestines. The study also noted that more than 90% of fish bones are capable of passing through the intestinal tract without causing much problems. What is the worst thing that's ever happened to you on a sports field? Losing a final? Breaking your leg? How about having a cardiac arrest in front of millions of people in the opening game of one of the biggest tournaments of your career? That's what happened to Denmark's biggest soccer star last week. Here's what you need to know about his treatment. After collapsing from cardiac arrest and being resuscitated during his country's opening European Championship game, Danish soccer player Christian Eriksen is to be fitted with an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD, according to CNN. An ICD is a device fitted inside people's chests that can treat dangerously abnormal heart rhythms known as arrhythmia, according to the British Heart Foundation. The heart has its own electrical system that regulates its beats. With every heartbeat, an electrical signal travels through your heart, causing it to contract and pump blood. If these electrical signals begin to be transmitted in an uncontrolled manner, the lower heart chambers, or ventricles, begin to twitch uselessly rather than filling with blood, according to the Mayo Clinic. The result can be a cardiac arrest where the heart doesn't pump blood for the rest of the body, causing brain damage or death. When an ICD is inserted, it monitors the heart's rhythm through the electrodes. If it detects any irregularity, it can send low or high voltage electrical pulses at different rates through to the heart to correct it. For now, the situation is that Erickson has been staying in hospital undergoing tests since his collapse last Saturday, according to CNN. 
On Tuesday, the player posted a smiling photo of himself in hospital and explained that he felt fine under the circumstances, to the great relief of fans and teammates alike. However, once the immediate danger has passed, many fans and perhaps even the player himself will wonder whether he will or will not be able to return to playing once he is fitted with the ICD. Both outcomes are possible. The head of research at the Danish Heart Foundation told Reuters that, It really depends on the condition you are treating. What kind of heart disease you are suffering from, that's very individual. But there are examples of top athletes that have come back to the field and restart normal activity. One such example is Ajax defender Daly Blind, who was diagnosed with a heart condition in 2019, but was able to return to playing months later after having an ICD fitted. He is currently representing the Netherlands at this year's European Championships. On the other hand, former England cricket player James Taylor, now 31, had his career ended by heart issues in 2016. He retired before being fitted with an ICD. Speaking to the BBC about his experience with an ICD, he said, I was really reluctant to have it initially, but once I had a greater understanding of my condition and how it's going to help me, it's my best friend. If something goes wrong, it looks after me, hopefully. Taylor then offered some advice to Ericsson, saying one of the big things I would say to him is to talk to people that you trust, and also open up to people that have had a similar experience just so you learn and have an understanding of the situation, because nobody really knows. Ericsson's future may be uncertain, but one thing that is clear is the timing of his collapse may have helped him survive. The Guardian notes that the survival rate for people suffering cardiac arrest can be as low as 10%, and this is mainly because they do not have immediate access to a defibrillator. Ericsson's life was saved by a pitch-side defibrillator present at many top-level sporting events, but much rarer in day-to-day -day life. With cardiac arrest in athletes often caused by an undiagnosed electrical or structural abnormality carried since birth, Ericsson can at least feel thankful this happened on a soccer pitch rather than a supermarket car park. We've always been told vegetables are chock full of good nutrients that have many health benefits, but the mechanisms behind them have largely remained unknown. Now, a new study offers concrete evidence that eating certain veggies can not only keep the bowels healthy, it also protects from the big C. Aryl hydrocarbon receptor, or AHR, is a protein that acts as an environmental sensor, protecting the gut from inflammatory responses to the bacteria that live in it. Scientists at the Francis Crick Institute and Imperial College London studied mice that couldn't produce AHR, finding that they developed gut inflammation, which progressed to colon cancer. The key to stimulating AHR is I3C, or indole-3-carbonyl, which is produced when vegetables from the brassica genus like cabbage, broccoli, or kale is digested. Mice that were fed a diet rich in IC3 didn't develop inflammation or cancer. Those with cancer that were switched to the diet also ended up with fewer, more benign tumors. The team now wants to see if the veggies have the same effect on people. They're hoping to do further experiments in organoids made from biopsies of the human gut and eventually go on to human trials. In the meantime, everyone should just keep chowing down on their veg. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.